Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. As you can see, we're looking at um, a Nintendo DS, uh, CDSI, this, I think. Um, this uh, was part of a job lot I got recently. It needs cleaning up, obviously, it's got some ink and scrub, well, little white marks, you know, as soon as you get the PVC cleaner. That will all come up like new. Um, it's got some labels and things that need removing off it. But uh, in general, it's in good condition. There's barely a mark on the screen and things, as you can see. And the problem with this was the calibration. Um, what was happening is when you tapped on things like, you can see I'm tapping on that arrow now, and if I tap, um, I'll just show you, if I tap on the, say, the left, the right hand side of that box, it works. Now if I go back to it again, tap on the left hand side of that box, it works. Because the alignment is correct. And what was happening is the alignment was off by about a centimetre to the left. So everything you tapped, you know, if I tried to click on this, um, say, the brightness settings here like that, um, just on the very edge, and I can do it there now, but previously you could tap anywhere here, and it wouldn't register. You could tap all the way over here, and it would register as if you pressed the button. And that was all that was wrong. So as soon as I went to the calibration and calibrated it, there's nothing wrong with it. It's absolutely flawless. So I don't know whether it's um, maybe it crashed at some point, and the um, calibration settings got defaulted to some really, uh, you know, the, I don't know, it got blanked. The EEPROM got blanked. Not the EEPROM, but the internal, um, you know, non-volatile RAM that holds the set system settings and stuff. Maybe that got wiped, and it it didn't prompt you know for the calibration so um, yeah I mean I've had a good play with this, played games on it and stuff, I've charged it up, you can use a, a 3DS uh, charger will work on the DSi um, but that was it really for, for this particular one um, no fault at all so really pleased with that, I got a new stylus, you can buy these off eBay, it's uh, an aftermarket one, it's a bit crappy compared to the original but it will work and it fits so um, pleased with that, we'll clean that up and show you the end result afterwards um, I've also got a couple more DSIs here which I'll show you, um, I've got a black one, this is, says it's not reading games and um, long story short I've had a look down the cart slot there, you probably won't be able to tell, or you might be able to tell, look at the left hand side, um, the second pin from the left, it's bent, that's what's wrong with that one, uh, pink DSI, not reading games, um, same problem, you probably won't be able to see this, it's a bit harder to see but basically it's the same thing. Uh, I think it's the second from the left or the second from the right there, pin bent. Um, on the DSi, the other problem with this one is, um, sorry, the DSi, the black DS light. Uh, the other problem with this one is, um, you might be able to see in there, there's a, no, it's hard to show, this is the right light, but there's uh, like a pet stylus half broken, stuck inside there, and I've tried pushing it to make it click and disengage, that won't work. So, in the case of these two, it's a case of going to have to do a tear down, so I've got one of these little tri-wing screwdrivers, so we'll start with the DSi Pink first, I think, DS Light Pink, I keep calling them DSi's, DS Light Pink, um, and see if we can uh, yeah, fix the uh, cart pin. So I've started by removing the battery here, you know the battery flap's just held down by that one little um, crosshead screw there, it's a tiny little thing, um, not quite sure how you get the battery out here, uh, whether it's going to come out of its own cord or might have to just lever it, yeah you just lift it in a little tab there and then it comes out so that's that out um, there's a few more crosshead screws here actually so we'll just undo those now and you can see that just like really really small ones um, in fact all the screws on this are really small so a bit of a stupid statement really get these out and then we've got the tri-wing in order to get in the case so it looks like uh, yeah move that out of the way uh, we've got a couple in various positions. Sorry, there's an awful glare coming off this. It's because it's glossy. Um, that one there. Mm. So we'll start with those three. I'm not sure. I've got the feeling there's going to be a couple under there. Those little, little, little rubber bungs. I get the feeling those probably have to come pull, be pulled out, and uh, hopefully we should be in there then. So apologies, it's starting to rain here. Um, just a quick look, couple of quickle. I keep saying that word. It's quite a common. Uh, slip of the tongue but uh, yeah a, a couple of quick uh, pointers here there's another tri-wing there just under the cart slot so don't miss that I nearly did um, and then what you're going to do is just prise just gently once you've got all the screws out um, you know the three screws there the two there uh, there are two rubber bungs plastic sort of rubberish bungs that go there like that um, so I've got this light on here it's not helping um, and then there's two screws in there the little Phillips you know crosshead ones um, and then you've got to lift it like I say prise it from the front and there's a little clip if you slide your nail across it'll clip out um, on the front there and then hopefully that bottom piece there should come off um, and the nice thing is we've now got in the case of the black one I want to take that to pieces we can get the um, you know the uh, stylus tray out there and deal with the stylus that's that that's going to solve that and um, in the case of both of these, yeah, it's not it's not ideal because I still can't really access the pin 
in there so not really sure how I'm going to approach this yet um, I have to have a look, might have to try and somehow take the shielding off if I can there's a couple of solder points on the uh, PCB here um, four places I'm not sure whether that's going to, probably won't allow it to separate even when I've removed those to be honest it might be integrated into the plastic moulding here so we'll soon see Right, well after lots of messing around um, managed to get it working what I ended up doing, as you can see I've made a little contraption here used my jeweler screwdriver and taped a needle onto it that's the only way that I could realign the pins inside um, well, I'll show you, there's probably another way of doing this I'll just carefully take this out, take the battery back out again um, there's multiple ways of doing this well, the way I've just done it is probably not the best way and I'll just demonstrate what I was talking about once you've got all the screws out here um, you can sort of prise the, the back part away here but then it's, it's clipped on the front so if you just slide your nail uh, so I'll just try and do that a bit better uh, you can do that without slipping off the damn thing yeah slide your nail around the edge like that all the way across the front as you get to the front it snaps off like that and that's it and then the back slips off lifts off these will fly off if you're not careful the trigger buttons um, they're just held in with like a little leaf spring there um, but as you can see you know it's that this solid this solid piece of uh, shielding here it's mounted at four places um, there but it's also part and parcel of the mechanism there's you know it, it clicks you know as you put the game in you'll see uh, I'm not sure which way it goes is that way yeah click click yeah, so there's a mechanism built into here, and there's a little bar there that's moulded. It seems to be going the way across, moulded, fitted into the mould in there. I'm not sure, and, and it's clipped in. You can see the shield is clipped into the plastic um, at various points um, uh, around the sides and things here. And you know, so you'd have to lever the damn thing off, and I really didn't want to do that. Um, you're not going to be able to see this very well. I'll just try and see if it can shine a bit of light in here. Um, it's going to be very difficult to get this it's very difficult to shine a light in and see it at the same time um, yeah that's not going to show up but all the pins are now perfectly aligned the same height I literally had to do hardly anything apart from just you know just put this in underneath one of them and just flick it up a bit several times until I just keep checking it with a magnifying glass and the torch there uh, very difficult very tricky to do but uh, that solved it so I'll do a bit more rigorous testing of this um, but this one can now be reassembled and you know like I say I could just test it for a bit really have a play with it and see how it goes so one useful thing that's just happened here um, it's allowing me to show you what happened with that DSi with the alignment you'll see uh, because the battery's been disconnected it's kind of initialised and it's like you know anti name etc etc so let's get my little stylus here and I'll show you right if I click uh, T and it said H U is K and I, it's a bit more evident if I hold a position if I um, and I'll do it with the left hand just so you can see which one's been pressed if I press to say the 2 watch what happens see W 4 R the alignment's completely screwed and that was what was going on with the DSi so and you can't actually navigate using the, the stylus on the screen because some of the buttons and things because the alignment's off it's just not you know, you just can't get access to some of the buttons and things. Um, if I just confirm this, just put a random crappy name. And that was the, the clue, really, on the DSi. It had like a random name of weird letters and numbers, and I thought, hmm, something's been going on here. Someone's not been able to enter the name. Um, but you can just navigate this using the buttons. So if I just skip through all of this and then do the alignment test, uh, the alignment, the calibration bit, um, I'm not even sure you get into it on the DSi because, um, no, sorry, the DS, DS Lite, I'm going to stop calling it DSi. Um, switch it off, switch it on. Somewhere in here, um, there should be hopefully a way to get into alignment. I'm not sure how. Is it that? Is that brightness? I don't know. Bear in mind that the alignment's off now. Uh, yeah, that's the brightness level, isn't it? Copy that. Yeah, settings. Uh, screen. Touch screen. Now oh, that's the DBA, GBA, GBA stuff. Game mode, advanced mode. Uh, is it in there? No. Calibration. Here we go. So this is what I was missing. Um, not sure how these are prompted to do this when you first get them, but clearly there's a way you can do it. Uh, Calibration marks, touch the marks, test calibration. Yeah. So you can see now, as I'm tapping those, I'm getting a desired result. So, um, 
I guess you could change uh, the name. That's the colour. Okay, let's go with red. Confirm. But you can see now that this is working. Um, if I do the name bit, where's that? Da, 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 da. Is it that one? No, it's not that. Cancel. That. Yeah, nickname. So, delete all that crap. Uh, let's just do test. Sweet. Um, yeah, you might not be able to see that because I'm slightly off camera, but you can see that it's actually working there now. Um, so that's that. Come out of there, come out of there. The system will shut down. It's interesting that it shuts down after you change the settings on the DS Lite. I never remember that um, from when I had a DS Lite uh, several years ago. Um, so we'll just put Alien in. Uh, aliens. Uh, it's not working again. Oh, why does it have to shut down all the time? There you go. So, that's launched that game. No problems at all. Sweet. I'll look at the black DSi next. Uh, oh, DS Lite next. Oh, God. Number of mistakes in this video. DSi, it's not a DSi, it's a DS Lite. So, as you can see, got the uh, black DS uh, light working here. Um, yeah, so this one was um, second pin from the left, I think it was, as you look at the car slot that way. Um, needed bending back. And if, you, if I was to speculate as to what's caused these, what's caused the problems with these, um, if you see these where the carts are just not loaded, um, it, I, I suspect it's, and I've got one myself here, which I use for just when I'm on the move really, putting all my games in one place, you know, in one of these ace card things. Um, they're not manufactured to the same high stand quality standards as uh, Nintendo. Um, so one thing you'll notice here, if you look at this, uh, you know, official car, can you see you've got that plastic mould in here that is a divider in between every single one of the car edges. So as you push it in, um, it's not going to focus very well this as you push it in the, the pins will slide you know and stay within their own channel there's a guide there to ensure they can't go the wrong way whereas something like this doesn't have that uh, the other thing you know there's other things it's the, the, the casing the thickness of the PCB I don't know if you can see they're offset slightly different here this one here is quite is a, a, a thinner than the official one so you're going to get a better connection with an official one but at the same time as whilst this one's relatively okay in the sense that the, the, the board's quite thin some of them are too thick you know the boards are too thick or design you know the casing means that the board fits higher up so of course it's going to bend your pins um, without those guide rails there as you've got on an official car they're going to go funny orientations you know you push it in a bit too fast with the board that's too thick or that you know the board is too high up too close to the pins you could easily bend a pin to the side um, doesn't take much effort so um, that's uh, that's my theory anyway I'm pretty sure that's that's right certainly with the, with the guards the guide rails those are going to help you know if a pin does get stuck you know due to some debris or something on one of the contacts there the pin can only go you know in the direction that the guide rails permit it to so you're going to limit the amount that you'll be able to damage if possible at all um, the pin using an official car so there you go um, I thought I'd cover that as well but um, and the other interesting thing and I'm not sure whether I need to revisit this um, later I'll do some more testing and do a bit of research but you'll find that if I switch this on say for example now um, and this is my memory failing me here. You'll just notice there's an, a, a, we've got a, a problem with that screen there as well, a few pixels. It's very common to get a few um, rogue stuck pixels there. And there's a little line there. Sometimes putting a bit of pressure on it and um, or hot and cold cycles can actually solve that. Um, I might have a go at that later. I'm not too bothered. It's very minor. But um, anyway, I'm digressing. The point I'm trying to make here is if I put the car in now, now the way I remember these used to work is you put the car in and it should tell you in real time that there's a car connected. Now, I'm not sure if there's a separate switch in the car slot that determines you've changed the car, um, but you'll notice it's just not showing it. Now, that could be my memory failing me. I'm sure that's the way it's supposed to work. And it's doing the same with the pink one, but if I switch it on uh, from fresh, maybe because it checks um, 
programmatically there. Just not looking at the switch to detect the change, but it's going, oh yeah, there's a game there. So that's when it works, and it doesn't automatically launch. This one, if it's got a game, it automatically launches, and I don't know, it's a, a, a revision of the firmware, you know, the, the, the operating system that's on these things, that's different, or whether there's a setting somewhere to auto-launch. I suspect there's a setting somewhere to auto-launch. I think there is, from what I remember. Um, but uh, yeah, they're nice, these DS Lights. What I like about them as well is they've got the Game Boy Advance slot, so I'm going to keep one of these. Um, just for playing GBA games, um, I guess you'll get a better experience on a, an actual Game Boy Advance due to the screen resolution being native. Um, I'm not sure it's native on here, it might do some sort of stretching or something I think. Um, anyway, I thought you'd find that interesting. Um, so, I'm not sure what's going on there, There's like a, can you see that little lump? It's like maybe someone's put the wrong screw in or screwed all the way through to the case, I don't know, I need to deal with that. Um, someone's clearly been in, in here at some point because there's another one there. So maybe it's got the wrong size screws in there. That's interesting. Um, so we'll, um, I'll dismantle this now anyway just to deal with those and see if I can get the um, uh, broken stylus out of the inside of this. Well, very interesting. I can confirm we have had a Muppet inside this because uh, one or two of the screws were missing. Um, I think one of the screws, I'll show you this way around. Oh, damn, I've pulled the bleeding trigger off now, where the hell's that spring? I mean, you've got to be careful you don't lose these bloody springs, they're so small. Um, oh, that one's come out as well, so put that one down there, that's alright, I can put those back in in a minute. But um, as you look at the case, this way up, um, the screw there was okay, that one was missing, and that tri-wing was missing, so two screws were missing. Um, yeah, not sure what the hell someone was playing at. Um, and I think with regards to this lump here, yeah, I think that's aligned with this screw, so I can only assume that someone perhaps tried to screw a tri-wing screw into the screw where, where that goes, which is like half the height. Um, so it wasn't that one, it was one of those little silver ones, uh, a little small silver one, tiny, tiny, tiny one, half the length of the tri-wing ones. So, yeah, I'll press that down. You can press that with some force. Um, I'll be able to press that back into the case, and I might just try and do that one as well. Um, sometimes a bit of heat helps, but you're better off masking the area. Don't go too hot. Just use like a hairdryer or something. You know, mask all the rest of it off with tin foil or something. Well, not tin foil, but capstan tape or something, and just heat that one area. Just press it, and you can usually press these things back in. This, there'll still be a remnant of it, a little bit like that there, but it won't be stuck up like it is now. Um, but you've got to be careful, you don't want to overheat it, you're going to, you don't want to melt it and stuff. Um, and I guess the other thing to point out while we're in here as well with these, with these little connectors, you see there's one, that looks a bit loose actually, one there, is it for the mic or something? Yeah, is it's not, that wasn't clipped on right, it, it is now. Um, so yeah, they, they, they're just like a little snap fit thing and there's one there, one will be for the mic and one's for, I don't know, sound or something like that perhaps. Um, it could be the, yeah, the speakers, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, very interesting. The other thing I'll note, point that were things worth pointing out, I guess, while I'm in here. I mean, it's all SMD stuff. Um, you've got um, a couple of little pots down here. I don't you can see this tiny, tiny, tiny little pots. So those must be used to calibrate these at factory, um, perhaps for the sound and the brightness or contrast or something. Typically, um, you've got some uh, information on the board here. I'm not sure how well this is going to come out. Uh, da, 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 like component names and things actually I thought maybe they were to do with jumpers or things like that but they're not it just seems to be component uh, names maybe the components on the other side of the board that not sure maybe these, some of these are test points no idea um, you can see um, some writing on here from the uh, probably quality control from factory uh, someone's signature that at some point in the past um, same with the cart slot and stuff but uh, yeah, anyway, the main thing is, I put that to the side, uh, if we come back to this, in order to get the stylus out there, and I'm hoping this is actually entirely possible, it might not be, um, i get my little uh, plus Phillips dual screwdriver, I think it's these three screws here, and I'm hoping that this, this is like a top cover to the stylus bay, um, and I'm hoping we might be able to see the broken stylus inside it. It could be that it's one solid um, little tunnel sort of fitting, if you like, enclosure that holds the top and bottom of the style. Oh no, there we go. So we're sorted. Um, and you can see why that has got jammed in there. Someone's been chewing it. It's one of these, you know, a pet's chewed it or somebody's chewed it. 
when they've been using it in the past so that will just come out there nicely I will clean that up because there's going to be bits of resin in fact there's saliva and shit in there basically and uh, we'll put a new stylus in it and that should be good to go whilst you're in there, whilst you've got the case in this state it's a good idea to just clean these edges as well you know because they get absolutely caked in shit um, I'll show you that's just come off um, that edge there um, and it's the same thing with these little, exp you know, the, the slots there for your headphones and your volume thing. You know, you may as well, while you've got it in this state, you take this as an opportunity to, uh, you know, clean these parts. I mean, they might not, not always need doing, but in this case, this one's pretty dirty, actually. So, it's, uh, yeah, it's worth doing this while I'm here. Um, and as I say, yeah, you can get that, that little volume thing that just comes out, or just slides out of this little gap here, like this. So I may as well clean that while I'm here as well and get the damn thing out. Yeah, there we go. See, so I can clean the face on that and then it'll uh, all look like new when I put it back together. Just something else I thought you might find interesting to point out while I'm here, uh, I forgot to mention it earlier. You see this little white piece of something, whatever it is here, with red dots on? That is actually a moisture detection pad. Um, I think. Um, there's one in each of these, and they, they put them near the connectors, um, so typically, if this was to be submerged under water, um, the water obviously leaking, because this is one of the, it weighs into the plastic case, and if you like, one of the easiest points to get in, because of the connectors there, and it will leak onto that, that there, and uh, you'll pr it'll probably turn red, so instead of it being red dots, you'd probably have blotches of red all around it, instead of it just being white, white background with red dots, and that's an easy way, you know, if it goes back under warranty with a fault, you know, within uh, its warranty period, that's one of the first things they will check when they take the lid off, and, um, and if that's obviously submerged, um, you know, if there's evidence there to say that that's had water on it, they'll go, oh, water damage, it's not covered under warranty. Um, and it's very common, actually, in a lot of modern devices, particularly smartphones and stuff. You'll find on iPhones they've got a very similar thing, a little white blob or something on the board there, a little sticky thing stuck on, um, and it will change colour if it's submerged in water. Um, just, to, you know, thought I'd point that out. So there we go, all cleaned up. Um, I've only just put the battery back in, so it needs to set it up again. You can see, I managed to squash that down a bit. All I ended up doing was wrap a cloth around that and press it really hard and sort of, and you know, do it different ways. You can actually, if you rotate, to rotate it, um, I'll show you. If I just put a bit of uh, paper down, paper towel, well, it's as good as cloth really, um, over the top of it, um, I just do that. As long as you, you know, you really need to make sure there's no circuit board or anything underneath it before you do it. Just do the, well, well, it's off the case, but that's all you need to do, and that's pressed pretty much back in, and that one's okay as well. So it's as good as it's going to get, but you know, by the time it's been cleaned up, like I say, it looks, um, it looks pretty good. It's good as new, really. Um, all clean and uh, working fine. Um, it's just annoying that tri wing's missing from there. That's the only screw that, that's visibly missing. There's one inside the under the battery bay as well. But uh, yeah, I'm quite pleased with that. It's come out really well, and obviously it's got a new stylus now as well. And this, I did clean out the stylus slot. It was absolutely disgusting. Um, and just just so you can see it, <laughs> that was the stylus. Look at that mangy piece of shit. I can't believe um, I don't even touch the bloody thing. It's been chewed, chewed to death. It's not got a tip. It's not got an end. Why the hell someone would want to stick that in the slot? God only knows. One thing I've just spotted that I haven't done is stick these little bungs back in. Um, yeah, they go this way with the the, be the majority of the beveled edge down towards the bottom. I think. Oh no, it's not. It's actually towards the top, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's towards the top, which goes with the aesthetics of the style of the case there. So that's one. These should stick back on. They're still very very sticky. Um, they're just held on with adhesive, uh, but you can use a jeweler's screwdriver just to carefully lift them up from one end to get them off to get access to those two screws. But uh, yeah, that's it. My work is done on these DSs. So I'll just clean the other ones up. I'm not going to show you the other ones. Uh, they'll be just as clean as this one. Um, I might show them, I don't know, just to give you a quick preview of what they look like, what they look like at the end. But uh, I think that's pretty much it as far as this video goes. Uh, so there you go, Is a quick look at the pink one after it's been cleaned up, um, again it's come out absolutely um, exceptional, um, almost good as new really, So, and I've got a new stylus for that one as well, so, in fact no it's not, that's the original one, because um, as you can see it's got white tip, a lot of these aftermarket ones haven't, um, it's not quite as good condition as the black one this I would say, but the screen is a bit better, um, I switched this one on, I don't think there's any um, 
graphical issues so yeah you can't see any stuck pixels on, on the bottom screen so um, it's slightly better than the other one so finally here's the DSi um, you can see marks have all gone it's looking really sweet that um, got a couple of small marks on this one on the screen there's one little tiny mark there and there's a couple of little tiny 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 little marks on the top but um, when it's powered up it looks fine there's no stuck pixels or anything on this um, one thing I've noticed is the, the, the bottom screens on these DSi's don't look as bright and clear to me as the ones on the DS lights um, could be wrong it might be the settings on this one maybe it's not the contrast or brightness is not right um, but uh, yeah, I, I, whilst I like the size of this, it's slightly physically bigger. Um, I kind of prefer the DS Lite, um, although the top screen's really clear on the uh, the DSi. Um, but yeah, as you can see, this one's working as well. So um, and all the mucky marks and things and labels and things came off it. So oops, some hairs and things on that, but it is um, minty fresh really in terms of its cleanliness and I got a brand new stylus for this as well because this was lacking a stylus so um, there we go that's three for three um, not bad those were about six pounds each I think maybe five pounds each-ish um, thanks for watching I'll see you soon